Well, good morning. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. This is Pastor Mike Erickson, pastor of Big Bear Four Square Church. And I love this church, love preaching the Word of God, and so glad to be with you today. If you're online and want to say that God has got a word for you today, and he wants you to walk in it like he wants all of us to walk in it. The message is, we have the victory from 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. Let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, that everyone who hears my voice will be hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit today. I pray, Lord, that the word would have a prophetic cutting edge and giving us understanding, revelation and knowledge and understanding of your purposes and direction for our life. God, anoint your servant to bring forth your anointed word. Open our ears to hear, our eyes to see, our hearts to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. turn to 1 John chapter 4 and starting with verse 1. Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Holy Spirit. You must test them to see if the spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. You know, we are to test and discern what comes our way. If you're on Facebook, I want to tell you that you're getting a lot of false knowledge and information, uh, theological information on the word. That a lot of you are putting like, love, to some things that are totally false. And when I when I get into this passage, we're going to understand that we need to test the truth by the knowledge of the Word of God. You got to get into the Word. You got to read the Word on a daily basis. And not only that, you got to sit under the teaching and preaching and counseling of the Word of God from trusted sources. Because not everybody who is telling you how it, they think it is is relating to you the truth. So, test and examine. We are to test and examine every word, prophetic revelation, doctrine, teaching, preaching, by the Bible, the Word of God. The question to you, are you able to do that? The answer for most of you is no, you're not. And the reason you're not is because you're not in the Word. And when things come your way, the, the Lord wants you to be able to question things and get to some answers and find out what the Word of God says and get that affirmed by the power of the Holy Spirit. So our knowledge of the Bible is essential for us to remain in the truth. If you read the Bible through in a year, you'll spend 15 minutes a day reading the Bible, 15 minutes a day. And in one year with some days left over, you will finish reading the entire Bible. Why is that important? Well, because there are passages and prophets and history books and poetry and things like that that you have not read either before or in a long time. You can, tell, you can really tell somebody's Bible knowledge when they, say, when they say, you know what, I'm religious. I read Peasel Psalms or Peace Psalms. Or, However, he said it. Psalms. Psalms. Okay. 
Yeah, you know what? You're really reading the word if you go to the Psalms, okay? <laughs> and you know the Psalms shows that you probably never read the Psalms before in your entire Psalm life. <laughs> And you think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. I heard a message one time where a preacher was kind of having fun with that. He says, you know what? Oh, I, the Bible talks about a peasel tree. Peasel tree. And he explains what a peasel tree was. And then he says, I'm just kidding. It's the, it's the book of Psalms. <laughs> Know the word. No, Jesus did not write the book of Genesis, okay? The book of Jeremiah is not part of the New Testament. One time I was sharing with a young woman who is of a Jewish faith, and I quoted Isaiah, and I said, you know what, Isaiah says this, and she says, you know what, we don't believe in the New Testament. I said, well, you know, that, that's fine. But uh, this might be a surprise to you, but Isaiah's part of the Tanakh, your Old Testament. Amen. You know, surprise. No we have to examine what the truth is. Some people are so powerful and adamant and authoritative and, and and confirming the things that they so profoundly profess, but they have no understanding of it in the first place. So we might, we have a fight against the world and its agenda for us. You know, the world's not content with its agenda for for them, they want their agenda for you also. But I must say, we want our agenda for them as well. We want to get them saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and walking with the Lord. But we fight against the world, we fight against the flesh, and we fight against the devil and demonic forces. We talked about that previously in chapters one and two of First John. But there's false teachings and false prophets and immoral practices. Anything that comes against us and the truth. There was a cult uh, back about 50 years ago called Children of the Day. You remember, do you remember that cult? And that cult was, they got converts by husband would allow his wife to bring a guy into the house and she would show him the quote, love of God, and he would be happy and they convert him to their children of the day cult, all through sexual immorality. And everybody is happy that why? Because it fit into their immoral practices. But anything that comes against us and the truth, we need the Word of God and the Holy Spirit to discern. And if we're not, if you're not saved by the blood of Jesus, and born again where Jesus. Christ is in your heart. You have no understanding of what I'm saying. But if you receive Christ, you have the Holy Spirit within you to guide you and help you discern truth from error. And God's given us his word, the Bible, as the authority and the foundation to do that. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. Amen? Amen. On the contrary, the weapons that we have have power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments 
and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Every thought that's at variance with the Word of God must be filtered out and destroyed. You, we want our thinking to reflect God's voice in God's Word. Amen? Amen. Okay, verse 2. This is how we know if they have the Spirit of God, if a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in a real body, that person has the Spirit of God. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here. The cults, cultic teaching in the first century actually was responsible for the apostles and those of the New Testament, writing the New Testament to write their works against false teaching that was happening in their day. One such man was a famous false prophet and cultist named Serenthus. Serenthus is also the father of what we call the Gnostic heresy false teaching cult, and possibly linked to the Judaizers as well in Acts chapter 15. But Serenthus distinguished between the man Jesus and the Christ. He denied the supernatural virgin birth. That's where all heresy starts. Denying the Trinity, denying the virgin birth, denying the resurrection, denying the sinless life of Christ. If you deny any of the essentials of who Jesus is, who the Father is, who the Holy Spirit, you have messed with the essentials of Christianity. And therefore, and by definition, you have become part of the false teaching and even cultic. So Serenthus denied supernatural virgin birth of Jesus. So he taught that he was the biological son of Joseph of Nazareth and Mary. And taught that the Christ part descended upon him in the form of a dove from the supreme ruler at his baptism. And then that Christ part that descended on him as a dove left when he got crucified because Jesus the man was not smart enough to avoid that. So the Christ part left. But really, the Christ part never entered to embody the flesh. Serenthus and his cult were the reason that the first book of 1 John was written and the essential reason that the Gospel of John were written as well. Serenthus preached against Jesus being the human embodiment of God. And that's why John says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, the Logos. Sorrento says, it's impossible for the Logos to be in the body of Jesus of Nazareth. John says, the word, the Logos became flesh and dwelt among us. 
The reason for John chapter 1, verse 1 through 18 is to confront Serenthus and his cult and the Gnostics who were really taking hold in the Ephesian church and the church of the city of Ephesus at the time. The teachings of the Eastern religions, Buddhism, some Hindu, uh, and various re religious teaching of the Eastern world says that through the period of history, there are people who had the God come upon them or Christ upon them and they become a Christ throughout their lifetime and that throughout history there's been many Christs and many God's people, God people on earth. Unfortunately, um, Trisha's grandmother, oh, one of her, grand, her grandmothers actually believed this and we tried to win her to the Lord when she's 87 and she said, you know what, I've had enough this one person is my favorite Christ, but it's not Jesus. Okay. So, the Gnosticism and the rise of this is really parallels the Eastern religions that are, uh, that are with us today. And this type of thing started with Serenthus in the first century. Now, Polycarp, you might have heard that name. Polycarp was the disciple of the Apostle John. Polycarp served the Lord for 86 years. He was eventually eaten by lions in the Roman um, stadium. But Polycarp told the story that John the Apostle rushed out of a bathhouse at Ephesus without bathing when he found out that Serenthus was inside, exclaiming, let us fly, lest even the bathhouse fall down, because Serenthus, the enemy of truth, is inside. For the most part, the Gnostics Actually, the Greek word gnosticos, gnostics means knowledge. And gnostics ad adamantly denied that the supreme being came in the flesh, claiming to G Jesus to be mere, merely human who attained enlightenment through the gnosis and taught the disciples to do the same. We're not done with this cult today. Gnostic writings in the first two centuries include books like, and you'll be familiar with this, The Gospel of Thomas, The Nag Hammadi Library, The Gospel of Judas. Uh, within the last 10 years, The Gospel of Judas made headlines by uh, the media who wanted to bring this thing up saying that the, this book was discovered to be written by Judas Iscariot. How many know what the Bible says about him? Mm -hmm. He didn't have any time to write it. He hung himself uh, before, before Jesus was actually crucified. But they said, no, no, the Gospel of Judas sheds light on the Bible. Well, the Gospel of Judas was written in 180 AD and was totally a Gnostic Gospel like the Gospel of Thomas and the Gospel of Barnabas. But people reading that online and things began to question the Bible's authority and authenticity because they were exposed to this new Gospel of Jude, Judas, which was not very new in the first place. When the Gospel of Judas came out to the public in the last 10 years, 
uh, a, Nos a new Gnostic church in Los Angeles started. And the cult, the heresy, started being revived in Los Angeles as a Gnostic church. The Gnostics, along with the Judaizers, were the earliest Christian cults. Okay, enough of that, right? Okay, you got the picture. John the Apostle's against a tremendous, powerful force in the early church to deceive people and bring them from the truth. John, John writes his gospel to keep people in the truth and writes First John as well. We know that Jesus of Nazareth has the title Christ, Christos, the anointed one. But it's so intertwined now, you could say that that's his total identity, Jesus Christ, first name, last name, title, whatever, because he is the only Christ, and he is the one. Jesus the Christ. When we, in our English language, if we make reference to the Christ, everyone knows we're talking about Jesus of Nazareth. He is the only one. Verse 4 says, But you belong to God, my dear children. And you have already won a victory over those people. And we're going to see how we do that in the first place. Because the spirit of him who lives in you is greater than the spirit that lives in the world. Amen? Amen. You know, from 1 John chapter 2, he says, you, you don't need anyone to teach you. Because you know that the Holy Spirit's in you, and he keeps you very aware of what the truth is as opposed to error. There's something about it. I got to check this out. I got to find out what the Word says about it, because the Holy Spirit within me is trying to keep me in the truth. Verse 5. Those people belong to this world, so they speak from the world's viewpoint, and the world listens to them. People will listen to anything. And it's amazing what people will take in as truth. I mean, you can still sell the man on the moon today. You know that? You can still sell the flat earth theory for the world. You know, you can still sell that. You can still probably, I mean, the world would just suck it up and, and take it in and call it truth. But listen, we as Christians have to be discerning of the truth and discern things from the Word of God and let the Spirit of God speak to us and lead us and guide us in all truth. Verse 6, But we belong to God, and those who know God listen to us. If they do not belong to God, they do not listen to us. This is how we know that someone has the spirit of truth or the spirit of deception. We have the victory in such things. In the context here of the first six verses, we have victory through one, two areas, through the Word of God and through the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you're not in the Word, you're not able to discern truth from error. If you don't rely on the Holy Spirit and have a relationship with God in prayer and worship and relationship with God and, and, and listen to his voice, you're not equipped to discern, not equipped to have victory in these areas because the victory comes through the word of God and through the Holy Spirit. Examine the scriptures. 
It's like Acts chapter 17. The Bereans were more noble than others because they searched the scriptures to find out if what Paul had been saying was true. Search the word. If we're not sure about what the word says, we have, we'll find out some way of what we're sure about. Some people say, well, you know what? Yeah, I have knowledge of this, I can Google it. Okay, well, it doesn't mean you get the right answer, right? Through the word of God, through the Holy Spirit, who's to teach us and lead us into truth and the victory is in the truth over the lies of the world. We have victory in Jesus Christ. What kind of victory we're looking for? Victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil, demonic forces. We're, we have victory over false information and false doctrine false prophets, and the like. First John chapter 5, we'll get into that in a week or two. For everyone born of God, are you born again? If you just decided you're, uh, you're a Christian and you like being a Christian, that's not what I'm talking about. But if you're born again by the Spirit of God and, your whole, and the Holy Spirit has transformed your life, and you've changed your old nature for a new nature, and you're being redeemed, and you're a child of God. The Bible says, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. Well, what does that tell us? That there's something to overcome. It doesn't say everyone who is born of God actually happily assimilates into the world. No, we are, we are different. And by that difference, we might be inviting persecution and even trial and trouble because we're standing for something. You know that phrase, right? If you don't stand for something, you fall for anything type thing. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory. Want to hear what the victory is? This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Your faith. Are you working on that? The word, John chapter, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 10. The word comes by, faith comes by hearing the word. And the word comes uh, by faith. R R Romans chapter 10. We find that our faith must be encouraged and strengthened and fed on a daily basis through the word of God, through prayer, worship. And what you feed yourself spiritually, emotionally, mentally, is the results you're going to get. Sometimes people feed their fears, right? Yes. And what's the worst case scenario? No, God doesn't want us to go down that road. He wants us to be people of faith, speak words of faith, walk in faith, and be at variance with the things that are in the world. John 16, verse 33, Jesus said, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. We need his peace. Right? Daily, 168 hours a week, 24-7. So that in him, in Jesus, the Christ, we have peace. In this 
world, you will have trouble. Jesus is just stating a fact. It's one of the things we don't really want to look at, but the Bible says, in this world, you're going to have trouble. You know, you're going to have problems maybe today or next week. Something's going to happen. You're going to have trouble. Right? But take heart. Take courage. Be encouraged. Jesus says, because I have overcome the world, and if he has overcome the world, and he is in us, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We have victory through him. Let's get on the victory side. Luke chapter 10, verse 19, speaking to you and me, Jesus says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Highlight that, memorize that, get that in your spirit, that you have authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Satan has no power to take away your salvation and to destroy who you are. There's no power. He is, has the power over you that you allow through unbelief and disobedience in the things that we put up with. You know, when we should be taking our authority over him, we just call it a bad day. You know, I got a bad hair day going, and or this or that. When in fact, God wants us to take our authority over the spiritual forces and of wickedness in high places, and become people of victory. Here's another fact: First Corinthians 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory continuously through our Lord Jesus Christ. Your victor, you're on the you're on the right side. Romans chapter eight says, "If God is for us, who can be against us?" It doesn't matter who's against us, because God is for us, and He's the only one that. You need to have your back. Keep in the truth. Don't wander away from the truth. Don't Also don't think that you're exempt from the possibility because I tell you what, a lot smarter people than us have been drifting from the truth. A lot of people who are educated and intelligent and have a lot of things going for them have allowed themselves to drift away from the truth. Let's not be one of them. Very, some good things can come up to take our time, to take our focus, to take our, our freedom in Christ. Some good things can come up, and we can justify those things but the enemy would be very happy in letting us pursue those things if Jesus is not our focus. We have our, the victory through him, because of him, and in him. We stay in the word. I plead with you, please read the word of God. Amen. Please read the word. Get in the word. You say, well, I've never read the New Testament through. Do that five minutes a day, five, five, single, <laughs> five minutes a day, and you'll read it possibly two times in the year. Five minutes a day. Anyway, as you can tell, I'm a person of the word. I believe in it. 
I believe it, ins it insulates us, it keeps us, it protects us, and we have the Holy Spirit to speak through his word to keep us in line with his fundamentals of who he is. Jesus is the Christ. He is the only Christ, Jesus Christ. We love, he is the embodiment of God in the flesh. And like John says, the word, the Logos became flesh and dwelt among us. Merry Christmas. And none other before him, none other after him. Jesus came the first time to bring salvation, God the flesh. He will come a second time to bring judgment and establish his kingdom. They're going to be totally different. Read Revelation 19, find out that Jesus is coming again, and he's coming again with us back as a church, and he will rule and reign on this earth as King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Father God, thank you so much for the people of God in the church today. I love them so much, and I ask that you bless them and encourage them in their day. Help them to walk in the victory of your word. Help us to confront false prophets and false teaching and not allow it to affect ourselves or anyone around us. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God today, and we have the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.